Right, we move on into VW Sports and qualifying session number two. Right, Rui against Polly. Rui with the Polo TDI from London, dialing in 17.10. Polly looking for 16.15 with the Audi. Much better reaction time from Polly this time, 0.5, but it's all about the ET. Can she run 16.15? There or thereabouts. 16.03, a little bit too quick. Oh, too quick for Rui as well. Goes 17.02 on a 17.10. Double breakout. It happens, Rob. It happens, mate. <laughs> I want to see the wizard back anyway. Next pair. Justin and Phil. Justin with the Audi TT. Used to run a golf, but uh, made way for the Audi. Dials in a 15.05. Phil Jones. 14.8 with the A3. That's his target number. Numbers appearing on the top of the scoreboards. That's their reaction times. The numbers on the bottom of the scoreboards. That's their times they're trying to hit. And then obviously when they go through, you'll see the times and the speed. Well, 14.83 at 96. That's nice. And that takes the number one qualifying spot. Very, very well done indeed. 15.02. Uh, that's a breakout, a little bit too quick. I well, think Kaylee Jackson then looking for a 1747. And uh, Connor Jones with the VW Beetle, 16.8. He'd love to see on his timing slip. Number one spot, 14.83 at the moment. So you're trying to get uh, within 0 0.03 of your dial in to take number one spot in VW Sportsman. So Connor Jones is going to take the strike first. Goes 16.71. That's a breakout a little bit too quick. Kaylee goes 17.91. Moves up to number seven. Jack Gooding with the Sirocco. 16.2. Laurie Anslow, 14.25. Both of them capable of hitting their numbers. Let's see how they get on. Jack currently in the qualifying position number 20. Laurie currently number 18. They both break out first time round. Fifteen sixty-two and a sixteen twenty-four. Jack Gooding moves up to number two with that run. Nicely done, sir. John Crawford in at number twenty at the moment. Ugh, don't like that. Morgan Wilson though, seventeen forty-eight. The darling. She's currently number four. Ingram Wilson currently number three in the VW Sportsman Championship at the moment. She won the Kobe Cup last year. Nice likes from both of them. So John Crawford, he's the one who's going to get to the top end first. How well has he judged it though? 15.65 he wants. It's a 16.20. That's a fair way off, actually. 17.72. No help for either of them. They stay put. How about Steve Metcalf with the Imposter Audi TT? 14.75. And Bruce Harvey with the Greenpeace Racing VW Golf. 1.9 diesel. 15.30. Watch him disappear in a cloud of not white smoke, but black. Ooh. Didn't disappear at all, unfortunately. So, Steve Metcalf then. The focus shifts over to him. 14.75. What's he got for us? 15.54. The rolling P of Ethan Lyle. 14.8. Currently the number 15 spot. Gareth Bates with the Beetle. 15.85. Oh, 
00.6 reaction time. Very, very good effort for the money for Ethan Lyle, but not quite there. But now it's all about the ETs. 14.8 and 15.85 of the targets. 14.9, not far off. 16.27. So Ethan moves up to number 5 from 15. And Gareth moves up to number 9 from 19. Paul Day against Andrew Bambrick. Pick your golf of choice. One for Maidstone, one for Manchester. The Darlings end 13 for Paul and 14-10 for Andrew. Thirteen seventy-two and a fifteen fifty-three. A little bit off pace for both of them, but a good improvement nevertheless on position for Paul Day. Moves up from nineteen to thirteen. Paul Robinson, the Sirocco fourteen-three. Guess what? Same darling for the Porsche. You'd have thought Paul Bargate was a complete novice in this Porsche. He's one of the most experienced racers out there, but he just doesn't know this car very well. <laughs> the legend that is Paul Bargate is, uh, is affectionately known as. Nice light, though. 0 6. Fourteen forty-eight, fourteen seventy-five. Paul Robinson with a better run, actually. He stays number six, but Paul moves up from sixteen to eleven with a Porsche. Well, Cresswell with the Beast, thirteen sixty-five, against Fee Sinclair with the Beetle, thirteen point six zero. It's only five hundredths of a second difference between these two on predicted times. But let's just see who can get the closest. So Rob 2, uh, 1376 and a 1396, so Rob moves up from 21 to 6 with that one, but still a little way off his dialing. How about Simon Clare with the Black Pearl Audi TT? Quite a few Audi TTs now, become readily available and uh, affordable. 1395 the dialing, at 1402, <laughs> well he's consistent. I didn't. I lent it to a friend. Oh. That's even worse. Yeah. Unfortunately, the uh, head gasket decided that uh, it didn't want to play ball anymore. And uh, yeah. So I went out last night, grabbed a spare head out of a friend's scrap pile, cleaned it up, put it on this morning. It's all talked up. Just need to time it up and uh, yeah, see how she goes. But good luck. Well, thank you very much. Right, Graham Fairhead and Graham Freeman. Now this is VW Pro qualifying session number two. This is where the darlings really do kick in. Graham Fairhead currently number one qualifier and he stays in the number one spot there. Goes 11.28 on 11.10. No actual help for him. Uh, Graham Freeman goes 12.46 on 11.80. Paul Jackson with a little sorry, Il Parata, the little pirate. And it's Ian Dale with the strip burner beetle. The dial in Zen, 10.65 on the scoreboards in the Kestrel Beer Lane. And 11.80 for Ian Dale with the beetle. And I'm loving some of these smaller VW cars like the Lupo, the Polos, where they've just completely kitted them out they're and gets flies down the track like that. They're absolutely nuts. Good looking run, 10.54, too quick. I wow. mean, it did look incredibly fast, didn't it? Yeah, well, he, he's trying to get 10.65, he went 10.54, so he's gone under his dialing by a tenth of a second. It's not much, but he's gone under. Right, the late goose, Adrian Solly with the Audi, going alongside Mr. Carl Goldsmith with the Golf. 
he's been racing in Street Eliminator. You know, he's done the cruise and everything. He's batting out Amazing. of the Amazing. I'll tell you yeah. what, that looks like my very first car as well. Obviously, his, I imagine, is a little bit more faster than mine was. Uh, yeah, this can <laughs> actually, I mean, he dials in 1050. He's had this in the nines. Both of them front wheel drive, obviously. Like, Go through around right about 140 plus. Well, Carl certainly does. Oh, smoke yeah, at see. the stripe though. 1046 breakout, 135, uh, 1140, and 1120 for Adrian. He stays six, but a little bit worried. Yeah, cherry on the tree there. A little bit yeah, too Yeah, I thought there was a slight little red light on that one. All right, Tom Herbert with the Phantom. Corrado going alongside Mike Mooney with Flat Lorat, the Beetle. The Darlings end, 1230, 1098. That's Paul, Tom's dad, out back of the Corrado. That's his car, actually. It's a top one drives a Golf. It's a nice start from both of them. Uh, Tom fading a bit here, unfortunately. Yeah. So let's see what Mike can do. 1230, the target gets 1216. Too quick. It's a breakout. Now, if he did that in racing, and you can see the problem there for Tom, Tom would have still won. Yeah. Easily, because the car in the other lane broke out and went too quick. Ed Keach with the Tango Golf, Rob Carter with the Audi S4. Now, he did put this up for sale the other week, but changed his mind, I think. Maybe he's just showcasing it to a new crowd this afternoon. <laughs> Something like that. I think he's got another car on the build, but whilst he's building it, he's running this car. But as well, I mean, I imagine you can find that, that, that people may be building a car, having a project, but also using the other car to try out new ideas, try new things that they could put into a newer build. Or just make sure that they're just still racing and not missing out on all the fun. Ah, something like that as well. <laughs> yes, like absolutely. That, yeah. Be part of the Santa Pod family. There it is. Jacob Bailey with a Jetta. Uh, sticking with the 10-3, darling. Going alongside James Gould, Team Militia Golf, 11.20. Jacob's already gone 1084. Come on, Jacob. Go. Get a good run in here, buddy. James Gould, nice to see it. 11 of some description here. Jacob away well. That was a really nice pull away, actually. Well, he's, he's knocking on the door of 150 mile an hour. He probably hit 140 plus here. 147 miles an hour. 1033, though. He's only three hundredths of a second off. And he's only number nine. Wow. Outstanding. And 1535, really for James, not exactly what he was looking for, but it will come round. But really pushed that breakout time to its limit that time. <laughs> yeah. 147, that's one of his fastest runs ever, I think. We'll check that with him later on. Uh, Phil Bock with the Caddy Man. 1210 going alongside James Hodson, the former champion in VW Pro, running in 1260. That car has actually been in the tens before. But that was uh, quite a few moons ago. Twelve fifty three plays at twelve eighty seven. Right, Luke Stevenson, the dial in adjusted to nine point three zero. Now he went nine thirty seven at one hundred and forty four on his uh, last run, going alongside James Rhodes with another one of these. Completely bonkers, Lupo. 10.39. And can they change their dialing they speed for any every time single like. time, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, Luke away well. 142.60 crit or 145. Staying with him, though. Go on, Luke. 9.44 moves up to number four with that one. A breakout for the Lupo. 10.27. That's quick. But well on to Luke. Jacob Bailey is still faster than Luke because they got their own battle going. They had a bottle of champagne <laughs> in, the in the back of the race trailer for the first one who ran a nine. Put it this way, the bottle had rust on it. It had been in there for so long until Luke finally got a nine and they got the bottle out. <laughs> Didn't realise the label had all faded and everything. Right, Paul Jordan, this polo doesn't hang about. Alongside Abby Tether with the Golf R. Power feeding it now on the polo. 
1151. Do you know what? He's treating that respect. Look at the speed though, 142 mile an hour. I mean, that car is capable of going well into the nines. Paul Jordan in at number 15, but just having a look at the numbers here. Let's double check this. Abby Teller into number one spot with that one, a 12.89 on a 12.85 dial, nicely done. Yeah, leading the pack by some distance. <laughs> I love that, the rust coming out it? of it as well. <laughs> it's like old water, isn't it? It just adds character to yeah. a car that's already full of it. Alex Long goes 12.24, moves up to 16, no help there. The other lane goes in at number 14. Right, Mark. Right, that's our look then. This is uh, Simon Crowley with the Mark 1 Golf. The trailer queen, darling in 9.99. Oh, you can just hear the roar as it yeah. set off then. The front tyres just arguing with the rest of the car. I don't want to give you grip and give it to me, give it to me now. <laughs> 1094, 127 miles an hour. Working hard on that car. But things though, you've got very little weight in that car. And so, this is the thing. And obviously flies. when the car goes forwards, the weight transfer is backwards, yet you need the weight over the front. So the front's doing all the back's doing nothing. It just needs to be suspended. That's it. Back wheel's just there to hold the back end up. <laughs> all the work has been done by the front end.